Hello and welcome to my Lost Wax Casting video. In this video I'm going to show you how I create metal castings from wax castings. Okay, so here we have the wax injector. As you can see, I push that nozzle and liquid wax comes out. So to turn the wax into the liquid form, we melt it in this pot. And these are the bags of wax that we get. So that will go into that pot at a 50 degree temperature and melt it into liquid. So then what I will do is to fill the wax injector up, I will take this lid off. I will pour the wax into it if it is empty. As you can see, it is empty. So I will pour the liquid wax that I've melted in this pot into the wax injector. I'm not gonna do it one-handed because that would be a disaster. So once the wax has been poured into the wax injector, that is good to go. So just want to make sure that I put the lid back on properly and you have to make sure that it's nice and airtight. Okay, so the lid is on now, nice and tight. And that gauge there is for the air pressure that I will be putting inside of the injector so that it can push the liquid wax out of that nozzle, like so. Okay, so here we have the molds. As you can see, it has a handle, uh, door handle pattern inside of it. So what I will do is, is I will make sure that I put boards and rubber bands around the mold because when I'm pouring the wax into that mold, it's possible that it will leak out the sides, which is what we don't want. So I'll apply the mold to the wax injector. And as you can see, there's a couple of vents at the top of the mold. So once the wax comes out the top of that, that tells me that the pattern inside is fulfilled with wax now. So I just want to lay that down and let that cool off and set for the wax to go hard inside. Once that's happened, after maybe five minutes, the pattern will come out. As you can see, it's a detailed door handle. Some of the smaller molds won't take so long to cool down like this one here that may only take a couple of minutes but the handle one could take up to five ten minutes and these molds here can take up to even longer to cool down so what i will do in the meantime is keep busy i shall either practice my bin throwing skills my knife throwing skills, or simply go and have a friendly chat with Aaron. Up, so our wax castings are all prepared and ready to go. So this here is a stick of wax that I have made and we call this a tree. I'll explain why in a minute. This is a rubber base that the tree goes onto. So this is the soldering iron that I use to melt wax to stick the tree onto the base i shall use the soldering iron like so to melt wax around the side and it acts like glue after spending five minutes or so of repeating that process uh, the tree is now onto the rubber base, nice and tight, like so. Next step now is to use a soldering iron to stick our wax castings onto the tree. Wax castings have been melted on now. And back to what I said previous about why we call that stick a tree is now once all the wax castings are on there is pretty obvious. Okay, so these are the metal flasks that will be going on to the bases with the castings in, like so. Before I put the metal flasks onto all of the bases though, I will tape up all the holes on the metal flasks. Yes, this does get tedious. If 
the flasks taped up and the bases on the bottom. Even though it's pretty tight on there, just to be extra sure, I put wax all around the base of the flask um, just to give it that extra air tight. And like I said before, the liquid wax acts as like glue. So the base is completely on there and what I will be pouring into the flasks later will not leak out the side. So the castings have all the flasks on them now and they're ready to go. So now I will prepare for the mixing process. So this mix will go into a vacuum and the reason why we put the mix into this vacuum is so that any air trapped inside the mix can get sucked out basically. So we're going to pour that mix into our flasks with the wax castings in and give the mix a once over again in the vacuum. So now all I have to do is rinse and repeat that exact same process with all the other flasks. So after about 40 minutes of hard graft mixing, the wax castings are now ready to be put inside that oven. So I have to start that by taking all of that tape that I put on earlier. And again, yes, that is tedious. Also need to break off the bases from the flasks. And I probably shouldn't have done this one handed. As you can see, that wasn't supposed to happen. So I've broken the rubber base off from the flask now. All I need to do is pick them up and put them inside this oven. So once all of the flasks are inside the oven, I shall set the program on the oven to run overnight. And the reason why it runs overnight is because the investment inside the flasks needs to get to a certain temperature. So the wax inside of the flasks as well will pour out into this tray and will leave just the pattern inside the flasks. The wax from this tray needs to be emptied every time carefully. With the tray empty now, I will put it back in and that is ready to run overnight. All that's left is to clean up the disaster of mess that I've created. It is now the following day and the oven has run a full cycle. So this is the furnace or as I like to call it, the cauldron. I will flick that switch on and it will fire up inside. I put a metal pot inside the furnace and I top up the pot with uh, metal. As you can see, there's a lump in there at the moment. That would take about 45 minutes to turn to liquid form. Once that's done, I will fill the pot up with some more metal ingrots. Whilst I am waiting for the metal to melt inside the furnace, I will go outside and I will clean out these buckets, which is the worst part of the job. And as you can see, I have emptied a lot of these buckets. Right, so now it's time to put in the last couple of ingrots into the furnace. The oven having done its full cycle with the flasks, I will now 
put the flasks inside this metal ring and back into the vacuum so that I can make sure everything's nice and airtight. These are the ladles that I will be using to pour the metal from the furnace inside that pot to the flask. So I will pour the metal from the pot into the top of the flask through a hole that was created from melting the wax tree away on the oven cycle. Also, this room is extremely hot and if you stand too close to that furnace without a gas mask on or anything to protect your face, you will burn some eyebrows off, which is not a good look. To give you some insight into how hot that room is and especially when lifting those heavy flasks you can see how much i'm sweating and don't let the terrible hair put you off the fact that i'm a good solid eight out of ten on a good day okay so now i need to lift these flasks into the cold buckets of water for them to cool down and they can be very heavy especially now that they've got metal inside of them so now all the flasks are inside the cold buckets. I need to put on the latest, coolest, waterproof clothing. The flasks will react to the cold water and to speed up the process, I will use a jet wash inside the metal flasks to get away the investment from the metal castings. Once the metal casting has come out of the flasks, it will have investment all in the side of them. So I will use the jet wash to thoroughly clean them. And after they have all been cleaned, the flasks and the castings, there you go. There you have the metal castings. So yesterday that was a wax door handle pattern and now it is metal and yeah these are all the other ones that i put in with it as you can see they look really good and we can create any design through this process and if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching